Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 7. This is the semifinals. Woohoo! Which means the next episode will be the finals. Oh my goodness. Wow, that happened quickly. It's been a lots of ups and downs. But let's get started, and you can find this episode on YouTube, not on Prime Video. All right, so this is a recap, as you know, and uh, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe because that would be a real thrill for me. Here's our first person up. Remember, each one of these people won their particular episode. Um, and I think there are eight participants every time. I'm pretty sure about that. Here's the painting that they did in order to be on the program. I love this painting. Ooh, it's got all the bells and whistles for me, and I, I really fell in love with this artist. I need to do a deep dive on him, too. Uh, and now, now we'll look at the painting that he did on the left, is the painting that he did that allowed him to be uh, judged into the program, and the painting on the right is what he did on his episode. Oh, boy, I just love that painting. I really, really responded to that green door. Not just because it's green, but every choice of color that he used was just so exquisite and so well done. I also like the really long, thin format of it because the challenge here was, of course, there was a very tall lighthouse. And I think this is how you deal with that. You have to, you have to do something with that big shape. And he did. This is the second one up. Everybody on this episode at the observatory did a great great job. It was just a stellar episode. This is the painting that won that day. Woof, just gaga over this as well. There are such exciting triads going on in the sky. You've got cerulean blue, you've got a rose, and you've some kind of yellow in there too. All, oh, just all mixed and blended together so nicely. Or placed next to each other. They aren't blended together because I would make them gray. They stay active because they're near each other and activate your eye. Now remember on the left is the painting they did to be on the program and on the right is what they did in their episode. Here's the painting, the next one, which is a drawing. And this person won their episode by painting this really beautiful bridge that's in... Um, Oh gosh, I think it's in London. Anyway, the actual structure was very beautiful. And on the left is, a, is what they did in order to be on the program, which, uh, you know, doesn't really, it's not terribly descriptive to me, but I thought the interpretation of the arch of the bridge was really well done because once again, you've got a really big shape and you've got to do something with that shape. To put that whole shape on the canvas or the piece of paper would kind of diminish. So, so um, you know, it's a compositional and design exercise and I think the artist answered the call. Here's the next one up. This is the painting that the person did in order to be on the program and it, it's pretty conventional. It's um, um, this person is not a colorist. This is the kind of painter that I call someone who's matching the colors to the environment that they're in, uh, that's presented in front of them. But there's some good reflective qualities going on here. Here's the, the painting on the right is a, what won their episode. I was begging for a diagonal in here. And I know that the actual land that, that um, you were seeing has a diagonal, but boy, I would really, excuse me, I would really love another diagonal in there just as a design element. Just sometimes you have to create your design element. Uh, this is the person, um, our next person up. I was gaga over this painting because I do love beach scene paintings anyway, but because this person is a colorist and they're not matching to what they see in front of them, they're pushing color, they're inventing color. It's, it's like a heightened reality of what was there. And the challenge on their episode was this extremely, uh, oh boy, I mean the structure, um, of an iconic castle that took up the whole space in front of them. So once again, you have to do something with that. And having the image run off the page, both on the sides and, and on top, was a super smart solution, I think. Now here's where they are for their semi-final episode. They don't get to choose this, so um, think about yourself if this was you. Yep, this is what you get to look at. Doesn't that look like an enjoyable thing to spend a day with? No, no it does not. Oh my gosh. So this is some sort of oil rig that's off the coast of, I think, Scotland. But man, this is... Now we've talked before, landscape doesn't just mean pastoral, beautiful, you know, hedges and, and hills. But this is, there are their pods where they have some, um, you know, they were away from the wind and the sun. But that's what they have to look at. Yikes. 
So you better, so it's, it's not even a, it's a painting competition, but it's, it's also a design competition here. What are you going to do with the problem that they've given you, which is a pretty, pretty difficult problem. And so you've got to do something with those structures. Just putting them in the middle of the page is not going to solve, solve your problem. So they got to put their thinking caps on. Here's our first response. I really like this one. I'm pretty sure I know the artist that did this one. I've been a fan from the first moment that they put a mark on the canvas. Has lost and found edges, has reflections in the water. Really smart to bring those reds in. There's actually a lot of use of color here, which keeps my eye activated when in truth, you know, what was in front of them. You can see right here, the day got brighter by the time the judging happened, but, but it was a gray day. <laughs> a gray day, gray sky, gray um, sea, and, and black structures. So you better invent color. This person invented color there as well, as well as movement. I think this is a really nice response as well. I am not gonna, there's nothing to criticize here. Oh, yes, of course I will because that's my job, which I volunteered for. But once again, I want a diagonal. But I say yay for those col color spots of value. Those orange and red, there they are, the stars of the show. Those color spots of value, you know, they weren't there. So you have to create them. And that comes from a lot of um, observation. So there must have been a sense in the artist's brain, there's something warmer there. There's something warmer and I want to express that warm shape. How can I do that? What color will fulfill that? And so when everything else is really neutralized and then you put a really big, not a big, but you put a, a spot of color, what I call color spot of value, it's gonna have more impact than it would if your whole painting was activated with color. It's just a smart device. Look at Winslow Homer. You're not gonna find any painting, I don't think, um, especially a seascape without some spots of red in it. This one, uh, this one I'm not as much of a fan of. This is definitely a study in grays, and um, th that's, that's really nicely done. This is just, this is where uh, subjective uh, comes in. I do like this slice though, and I do like to look at paintings sometimes in slices, because you don't want to have, a, you want to have a painting that has some ex exciting parts. It's not just about the whole, yeah, see, it gets exciting in there. But, ooh, overall, the colors are so neutralized. And I understand why they did it. That's what the day was. So they were pushing color. Oh, it works really well from here, doesn't it? Wow, there. Oh, that's very impactful. And that's important because remember, uh, the winner is going to be chosen to go on and do a uh, commission that's going to be on a gallery wall. So it's got to read from, from fairly far away. Funny, it reads really well from far away and not as well when you come close up. Well, that can happen. Probably happen. Yeah, it can happen with anybody's art. It certainly happens with mine. Okay, here we go. The next one. This is the person that's done. Um, she's been drawing throughout the competition, and um, you know, I think she did a really good job. Um, I don't know how to compare paintings and drawings. I think they're. It's like comparing sushi and hot dogs, but that's what we're here to do. Here's a close-up so we can see some of those marks that she makes. So it must be done with pen and ink. It, it's not a print. Um, boy, it's just so heavy on the detail, which is just not my thing. I'm interested in big overall shapes and impact, and that's just not what, what this person does. See from far away? I just don't find that very impactful. Um, but we will leave that here. Now, and it gives me a chance to say, remember, there will be three, there won't be a winner for this episode. There'll be three people that go on to the semi, to the finals, and then only one of those will be selected as the Landscape Artist of the Year for the season. Here's someone who really pushed color. You can see that, right? Ooh, you know there was no purple. You know there was no orange. You know it wasn't there. So you have to create it, and I think it's an exciting use of color. I also see the diagonals going on. Yeah, they're subliminal in some ways, but they're definitely there and they're effective. I love the paint. You know, it's a really generous amount of paint being used there. You got some big, big arm movements. This isn't done from the elbow down. Yeah, I did that on purpose to put show uh, the judge's hand there so we can see the scale. This is what I kind of feared is that someone might put the whole structural thing in the middle of a canvas, which is kind of what happened here design-wise. Um, I'm, I'm dying to crop it a little bit. I think it's more dynamic when we look at these little cropped images of it. But, um, but they're going to be judged on what they did, not on what they, um, on Joe McKenzie's opinion, what they should or shouldn't have done. <laughs> I don't think they care. 
boy, the, those oranges in there. That is just, that's genius. That's so, ah, oh, fantastic. Really nicely done. Now, the other thing that they did here is, you know, you, you, you bite off the whole scene to do. I, I, that, I just wouldn't have done it that way, but it's, it's nicely done. Now, this is a print. It must be a linoleum print. Uh, again, I don't know how to judge something that's completely black and white against the coloration that the other people are doing. So maybe um, I'll hand it over to you and, and you, can, you can do the commentary on this one. Um, has a really nice design, that's for sure. Got some nice diagonals. Those horizontals are balanced by the verticals. Ha! Huh, they invented a man on the platform. That's kind of clever. There's some storytelling there. Ah, anyway, I like that slice of it, but um, overall, I, I would be very surprised if they they have yet to pick a printmaker to go on to the finals. That, um, not that uh, not that it won't happen, but um, but we we will see. Again, three people will go forward. Yeah, how do you compare those two things next to each other? That's just an impossible thing to do. But we're here to appreciate it, and I feel so lucky to be able to see this because it's such great work that they're willing to share with us under really difficult conditions. Now, here's a very, very, very gray interpretation, and I understand why. This is what the day was. So any color that we've seen previous to this would have been invented. This is really much more realistic to what was there. It's not my preference. You know, as a painter, I like to invent the world I want it to be, not the world as it is. I, I get enough of the world as it is on a daily basis. But reds were used. Those are rusty reds, you know, that lean toward brown. And, um, you know, I'm only saying that because if you can imagine like a real spot, a color spot of value of a really vibrant red would really excite. It would excite the whole piece. Um, John Singer Sargent called, um, used to call that, that the effect. He said, you have to find the effect in a painting. It's, it's not a thing. It's more like a, a, either a temperature or a decision the painter makes that kind of lights the flame, so to speak. Anyway, um, I kind of get an idea of what he, what he talks about when I look at his work and I can tell kind of in my own eye, oh, that's the effect. That's what he was looking for. That's why he sat down and decided to paint it. That's not the choice people had today. You know, this was imposed on them. I don't think anybody got up that morning and said, oh, let's go out and paint those oil rigs in the, on a cloudy day. No, that's not what happened. Plus they were cold and tired. Well, anyway, here they are. The sun came out later in the day and here are our finalists. Oh, you can just, they look cold. They look so cold to me. I mean, it had to be windy. You're right on the coast. Plain air painting is not for the faint of heart. You really have to be a pretty healthy individual to do it. They do provide you with those pods, of course, and a chair and, uh, you know, an easel and, and, you know, you can bring your technical devices, but this is a long, long day. You can tell just by where the sun is that it's been a long day. You know, we're not, we're, they only have four hours on task, but for the whole day, they've been there a long, long time. Here are our finalists that are going to go on to uh, the last episode of the program. And I am pretty stunned that this one is one of the finalists, but this is typical. Hashtag Joe is always wrong. Um, uh, oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, I've been a fan of this one since I saw the first mark, as I said, that they made on canvas. So I want them to go forward and I want them to win. And again, hashtag Joe is always wrong, so you can be sure that they won't. But I am surprised that the judges passed up some colorists on this on this program. Uh, this is this this person is a good colorist. And the last one for me again is a disappointment. It's just a missed opportunity. And and you know for the people that were passed over, we get to go to you know deep dive on them and find out more about where their art careers are now. I'm sure they're flourishing and doing just great. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and the next episode will be the finals of this season. And there are our finalists. Which one do you like the best? Which one do you think will go on? Let me know in the comments. Huh, we shall see. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Yeah.